Welcome back guys. It is the morning. We are starting this day at my house and yeah, I thought I'd show you something that is getting overgrown with weeds in the backyard. There's where Will's M3's been hiding. You guys thought he got rid of it or something. No, he just parked it in my garage and it's just sitting there. Classic Will. This is a 318 IS with no, no drive train, but it's got a black interior and it's a nice car. And this is the car that I think we should build for Rudnick. So if you guys are Rudnick fans, go spam him on this and tell him that we need to build him a turbo M50 E30. And this is the one. He'd love that. This is a car that I have owned since 2002, I think. Yeah. Yeah, senior year of high school, I bought this from a, a bank. It was a, a repo car. So, uh, I built it with a late friend of mine who tragically died in a, in a hiking accident. So probably never get rid of it because of that. But it needs a lot of work. It's been sitting. It's bed linered yellow on the outside, black on the inside. Um, so in the summer, you can take the top off and let it rain in it. As you can see, there's no transmission in it. Yep, there appears to just be a hole. And uh, it's got this sweet red interior out of uh, my wife's late grandmother's pickup truck. So this is just like all the, you know, the memory people. But this, this is, is what makes it cool. This is a tribute car. It is a tribute car. And more on that. So if you guys know anything about these series Ford trucks, they're called dent sides. They're made from 73 to 79. Um, the Broncos were only made in 78 and 79 though. You cannot get a big block engine from the factory with four wheel drive. So the only way big blocks came is if you had two wheel drive pickup truck. This third life is a 460 out of my uncle, late uncle's um, 79 F250. And I decided I was gonna build it and I did. This was the first engine I ever built um, by myself. And I had the machine shop do, the, do some of the machine work but I assembled the entire engine. Along the way, I went a little crazy and uh, actually bought a stroker kit. So this is no longer a 460, it's a 557 or a 9.1 liter. I don't remember exactly what the overbore is and the overstroke is at this point, but it's a SCAT uh, full stroker kit, all forged internals. It makes around 650 NA, NA right now, Shit. Um, but it could make a lot more. It still has stock dove heads on it. Um, I, I do have a full adjustable valve train in it, so it has um, adjustable rockers and everything, so there's a little bit more, but I, I spent money on having the heads rebuilt before I decided how crazy I was going to go. So, but if I throw a set of aluminum, like, Edelbrock heads on this, like, the sky's the limit. Big old weigh-in, torque thrust manifold, uh, Holly Dominator, I think it's an 1150 carb. We got the, the DUI, the GM style, all-in-one distributor for everything. And then the crazy part about this is I built this to be, it's 14 to one compression, which if you people aren't from Colorado, that won't run anywhere on regular gas but because we have so little oxygen here, this can run on pump gas up here. I just can't take it below a mile high. And that's where it makes most of its power. So if we ever wanted to supercharge it or anything, we, uh, we're gonna need to lower that compression because it's a little high for that. But she's a lot of fun. I, uh, but because of that compression, I couldn't get it to start. And it turned it out that the, the starter didn't have enough power to turn over the engine because the compression was so high. So I ended up having to get one of these Powermaster mini starters. It's like a $500 starter. And it started it and the thing ran great for a week. And then it ate the flex plate because it was so much torque on the gears from the starter to the flex plate. It just chewed a bunch of teeth off of it. Jeez. So I couldn't bring myself to pull the engine back out. Oh, it also has these giant uh, hooker um, fender well exit headers. So they actually come out the side and then go on the other side of the frame. The exhaust still needs finish, but there's some crazy headers. And then, um, so anyway, so I pulled the transmission out. This is a C6, it's an auto, so it's a, it's a three-speed auto. A lot of drag cars use them. Um, but I had that built, so now that's ready to handle a thousand horsepower. And then I just never put it back together. It's got a brand new crazy uh, flex plate on it that can handle it all. Um, and there's some axles at the shock, or at the shop, I don't know if you've seen some one ton axles out of a 79 F350. So we can get these half ton axles off of it. Then we can start fabricating the lift, and then we can get some wheels and tires, and then we can make this thing a whole lot of fun. Anyway, this is something I've owned forever, and for the majority of my ownership, this is what it's done. Today, 
we are going down south. Our buddy Austin has uh, an E30 that you just purchased an E30 that Will actually used to own. It's a it's a V8 swapped E30, but it's a different kind of V8, so not what you wouldn't regularly expect. So we're starting to head down to the springs, about an hour south of us, with the trailer to pick up that E30 I was just talking about. Um, we have a slow leak. Need to get some air, and uh, this is what we're dealing with. why you would park here. I don't know why you would park like this, but yeah, just, and they're just right there. I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea what they're doing. Oh, oh they're go. moving. Shit. Thank you. So, just trying to get some air. This is new thing called exact air. Type in the PSI that you want, and then it just does it. But it just sits there, it doesn't do anything, and then it like gives you three PSI at a time. Like look, it's not doing any air right now. And then, ooh, ooh, it made a noise. It went from 44 to 48. Now we just sit here. All right, we're, here. we're down in the springs now. And this is the E30 that we're picking up for our buddy Austin, um, that Will used to own. I don't really know the story completely. I think Austin owned it and sold it to Will. Will sold it to these guys way back when who didn't do anything with it. And then Austin bought it back. Anyway, it has an issue of throwing belts or something, but I said it has an interesting V8 swap. So this engine, if you guys know about, you got heads that go this way, but then it kind of looks this way, it's weird. This is actually the engine out of the President at our shop, but this is a VH45 DE. That is what's in here. It's a whole lot of fun. I don't know a whole lot about what it took to fit that in there and then what transmission and whatnot's in it. So we're picking this up and getting it out of here. Check out this sick sticker. Yeah. <laughs> Best part about it too, it also still has Will's plate on it from back then. So he's pretty stoked about that. So we didn't bring a cherry pick or anything. I think we're gonna get this on just by, you said rolling it? Yeah. Sweet. I mean, it is a it is a bad engine. Like it has bent rods and everything. Yeah. He bought it from us with the brackets. This car keeps throwing belts. That's why we're towing it. So we'll roll this on with our brute strength. Yes. And then roll this on. Dude, it has the VH45 tack in it. That's crazy. That's super cool. They put the fucking infinity tack in it. That's actually that's probably maybe the only way they could get it to work. So yeah, there's no steering wheel on this because dumb aftermarket shit. Yeah, so I'll show you. Aftermarket hub. Quick release hub. We have two steering wheels. We have an aftermarket one. It looks like it would bolt right on if there wasn't a quick release one, but I don't have any tools. And then, because they said they needed a wheel, we just brought a factory wheel. Obviously, it doesn't go on. So, I have a t-shirt. Because it's hot. And I am just turning the hub like that. So, way down there is the trailer. Wish me luck. Godspeed. How are you feeling? It's hot. You buttered the bread on that one. Oh, that's it's hot. That was easy. We load a lot of cars here at Denver Beer and Oil. <laughs> Dude, even with your limited steering, you had that down. Whew. So we'll uh, we'll tie this down and we'll get we'll get back with you guys later. Sweet, dude, that was not bad at all. We've got the engine loaded up already. We may have spilt some oil um, as we were rolling it on. You can see that hole there on this side. It's actually supposed to be a stud, kind of like a bracket for something. So knock that off, put the engine on upside down because we kind of like roll it on and uh, you know, but we're all good now. We have secured the cargo. Um, I thought we had four straps, we only have three. I'm confident. V8030, I'm gonna get her back on the road and do drifty things. Check this out, this is pretty cool. This on. It's a V8, so it's kind of like a Trans Am. So we put whatever the Bundeswehr, or however you say it, thing on there. So that would be a Will mod. Yeah. 
hot boy as shit. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff Will's into. Yeah. Birds on hoods. And yet he hates birds. He hates birds. Hamish has been trying to get birds, and Will tells him to his face that he will kill his bird. Yeah. And yet... Bird. Or maybe that's... Maybe this is a bird that he has killed, and then he mounted it on the hood of his car. We're back at the shop. We have beer. You have beer. I drank mine. But my old car's here, and that's cool. Um, but it has been severely neglected since I last owned it. This thing used to rip, and now it's been hit, and everything's cracking, and like there's no interior, and it doesn't really run. I took the battery off, so it's not gonna run. Um, yeah, so we've tried to start it up, it runs, but like it's got some weird throttle cut going on, which is frustrating because I have a video of, well, multiple videos of me absolutely burning the shit out of the tires on this thing. I mean, this, this car used to rip so hard, um, and now it doesn't, which is a little sad, but whatever. Fuel pump's still working. Start it. Oh, it does that a lot. Don't worry about it. Just do it again. Do it again. Uh, you just gotta keep doing it. It'll start it. There it is. The new starter, too. So, remember I told you earlier about the, uh, that they moved the Infinity pack over and how cool that is? Well, I tried it. it doesn't work, and Will told me he actually broke that, so that's a cool feature. It did work when I had the car. <laughs> it's got some sort of weird two-step. You guys right? RPM doesn't work, but I'm guessing this is around 1500. But I'm a floor it. That's all it does. I bet the crank position sensor is like not attached properly. I bet it's losing signal. So what are we doing with it? So okay, so for those of you, Chris may have explained it, but this is a VH45 DE swapped car. It's a late one, so it's a 4.5 liter. It should make over 300 horsepower, over 300 torque. Uh, I got it incomplete. I finished the swap. I had everything running perfectly. This thing used to be an instant oversteer mach machine. Like you touch the throttle and it's just Rah! just getting it. Um, and yeah, we get it back. It doesn't. There's a lot of stuff wrong with this thing. Um, I was having belt issues when I sold it to Hunter, so I got it from Austin. Fixed everything on it. And then I sold it to this dude named Hunter, and I don't think he drove it for like two years, or maybe he tried to. Looks like he did some shitty modifications, and like, it pretty much just rotted. Now it doesn't even run right, so we gotta fix a lot of stuff on this thing. But when it is done, and it runs properly, this thing fucking rips. Like, it's dope, this thing is sick. And it's the only VH45 swap DE, VH45 DE swapped E30 on the planet. Uh, was originally built in California, it's Nissan Titan. Battleship Gray, which is pretty cool. The car is really cool when it's working properly. I'm actually pretty stoked that we got it back to the shop so we can do some content with it because this car is one of my favorite E30s ever. And Austin's one of our favorite kind of friends and he's like, make my car work and you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. Yep. So, thanks Austin. Thanks Austin, we're gonna do some burnouts with your car. Hopefully not with your wheels on there because I know you'll probably get upset since they're new tires. But, he actually wants new wheels. Oh, okay, cool, because I hated these, that's why I put them on there. He was asking. Cool. I said we had some bottle caps, he said burners. Sweet. So we'll do plenty of tire burning on this thing, um, but it sounds like it needs a lot of work. So we'll, we'll figure that out, and then we'll do some burning videos for you. Thanks for watching, guys. That was our adventurous day, driving forever to find cars and loading them and then having them not work right, but it's going to be sweet one day. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the beer. You guys are awesome.